Are we waiting for him to signal us or we are on? Uh, just a few seconds and we go. We are live anyway. Oh. So uh, good afternoon to everybody. Welcome to the 14th chapter of our series Italian Table Talks. I am uh, Gianfranco Sorrentino. I am the president of Gruppo Italiano, which is a not-for-profit organization that promoted Italian culinary culture here in the United States. Uh, first of all, let me thank the uh, our viewer, our IT genius, Elias uh, Lee from Philin, and our co-producer, David Ernst and Paola Bolla Sorrentino for organizing this webinar. Uh, today's webinar title is The Rise and Fall of Italian Cuisine, and we'll be focused mainly here in the United States for the United States market. Italian cuisine has been one of the favorite and most popular cuisine around the world. And for many years has been the number one choice for the American um, people. However, lately, according with the National Restaurant Association, it seems that the Italian cuisine is not as popular as it used to be. We are ranked now number three after the Chinese and Mexican cuisine. Uh, I guess one of the most important factors is the increasing of the immigration into the United States from China and South America. Uh, we have right now about 16.5 million Italians and Italian American versus the 60.5 million Hispanic and the 12.5 million of Chinese. Actually, a few days ago, we find out that New York is one of the biggest Hispanic city outside of South America with 2.5 million Hispanics. Wow. And the Italian, uh, the number of the Italian uh, in America is going down from 10 years ago. But beside the immigration factor, there are probably other reasons that we cannot see. Italian cuisine can be victim of its own success in the meaning that is been so popular, that has been imitated so much with the fact that can, that can affect our image in a negative way. A few days ago, I was reading a report from a smart brief and appeared that 77% of American students want more Asian choices on their menu. A few, few days ago, on an Italian newspaper, Il Corriere della Sera, Gordon Ramsay stated that he feels that the Greek cuisine is far better than Italian cuisine. But on the other way, the French newspaper Le Figaro just published that for the first time in France, the mozzarella cheese sold more than the camembert. Oh! So, <laughs> so is the Italian cuisine really falling or are we holding our position? Are we, what we have to do to regain our position, to hold it, or even to increase our status in the ranking here in the United States. So today we have a great panel to discuss this, uh, this question. Uh, first, I would like to introduce the Italian Trade Commissioner for the United States, Dr. Antonino Laspina. He has served various posts around the world with the each. He has been director of each Beijing office. He also is became a member of the Young Leaders Group of the Italy United States Council in 1998. Uh, he's gonna give us uh, uh, his remarks and then after I will introduce our moderator and panelists. Nino, prego. Thank you, thank you Gianfranco. I'm really delighted to be here and uh, give my contribution. Uh, this opening remarks about those interesting points that have been uh, the subject of your introduction. So it's a uh, uh, intellectual provocation, if you want, because you have been mentioning, you know, of, about leaders, leadership, and uh, uh, new emerging uh, cuisines. Uh, you mentioned the fact that young are preferring the Chinese cuisine and Mexican cuisine. I think that uh, even the title of this event, the rise and fall with a question mark of the Italian cuisine, it's really a provocation. My idea is that uh, you know, when we talk about this kind of, uh, of a phenomenon, uh, we have to distinguish between opinions and statistics. If somebody says that, in his opinion, the Greek cuisine is the best in the world, is even better than the Italian cuisine, I think that, first of all, is uh, the question is, are we sure that he knows all the details of the Italian, uh, of the Greek cuisine? Because it cannot be a trip that is going to help 
one specialist, even one of the best, to be able to say that the Greek cuisine is better than the Italian cuisine? And this is, I think, the first question that we have to pose to ourselves. So this is an opinion. Then we have statistics. For the statistics to say that the Italian cuisine is the third in the United States after the Chinese and the Mexican, it depends on what kind of statistics we are talking about. Because if we talk of statistics in terms of popularity and number of outlets, then it's okay. But this has not been our target, I would say, in terms of institutions, of specialists, of chefs, of uh, entrepreneurs of the Italian cuisine, Italian restaurant, to be the number one in terms of numbers. In fact, in the last 30 or 40 years, the great attention for all the system, the trade agency, the government agencies, the schools of cuisines, the great chef, the entrepreneur has been to reposition the Italian cuisine as a leader in terms of creativity, in terms of innovation. Let's say one word, in terms of modernity. What is modern? In this sense, modern is to make a cuisine that is going to satisfy the emerging trends of the people, to satisfy also the new values. What are the new values? Mm -hmm. The new values are basically the health, the wellness. So we have been trying to associate the goodness of the Italian ingredients with the Italian techniques in order to preserve what is good in the food. So once again is elaborated cuisine and elaborated systems that are destroying the elements of the food, sources like our friends, our cousins have been doing since the time that Catherine of Medici arrived in, 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 in France. So there are a lot of schools of cuisine, schools of thought that have been fighting each other. Italy, like in the fashion, you know, we have been in the, uh, working and in order to identify our own lines. And I think fashion and uh, food in Italy, the Italian way, we have parallel stories. When we introduced the Italian fashion, what was the purpose? That everything should be more natural, it was the natural look, the natural fibers, everything simple. The destructive jacket of the George Armani that appeared on the 1982 edition of Time was signing a completely revolution compared to the past. The Italian food today is a revolution compared to the fact that people were putting everything together and the result was just appearance. So if, if we have to see the rise and rise and rise of the Italian restaurants, I say that we have no competitors for the simple reason that 40 years ago, there were no Italian restaurants in the five stars hotel. At that time, the five star hotel was always with a French restaurant. I've been working and doing this job for exactly 40 years. I've been living in Asia and in many other parts of the world. And I have seen that the opening of new five-star restaurants usually now is with an Italian restaurant there. There is the main restaurant usually is an Italian restaurant. So this is the rise, rise and rise. <clears throat> in terms of number, I have to be honest, I don't think this is our target. We cannot imagine that we can sell fashion and food more than China or maybe in this case more than Mexico, because they are powers in terms of production. Our purpose is to make the best possible products, to make it available for the restaurants, to make it available for the consumers. This is our philosophy. So let them say that in terms of statistics, uh, a small Mexican outlet is makes a number and makes a statistics, but this is not what an Italian chef can do these days in the United States, because we are looking for quality. We are looking for two directions, as I already mentioned. One is the evolution towards the quality of the Italian American restaurants. A lot of Italian American restaurants now they are having as a model, the Italian restaurants, the great chef. They are learning that there is the Italian cuisine that has been, you know, the evolution of the Italian cuisine in Italy and they are considering this like a model. So I'm not telling that they are going to become Italian per se, 
but they are looking at something that should be a different restaurant from what they were 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And there are the new Italian restaurants that are founded by the American entrepreneurs or other entrepreneurs of other nations, Italian entrepreneurs, that they've been coming to the States with the idea that the model is the Italian restaurant. We have to define what is an Italian restaurant. So is an Italian restaurant is a restaurant that is not aiming at having, you know, popularity all around. Because to, to manage today an Italian restaurant, an authentic Italian restaurant, you need ingredients, you need technique, you need equipment, you need skills. You have been mentioning how difficult it is to get the people that are going to satisfy the standard of the new Italian restaurant. So after all, I think statistics can position us at the third position here. But my idea is that in terms of leadership, in terms of uh, values, wellness, consideration for the health of the people, simplicity, and all these new trends, uh, green approach, circular economy, sustainability, all these elements, maybe the Italian model in terms of restaurant is the one that is already there. And I think American people, their understanding, of course, you need a pocket. You need money. This is true. It's not absolutely popular, the Italian restaurant. But what is important is that I can see that as soon as the COVID effect was over, in the first seven months of this year, we have registered already a growth in the food coming from Italy. And we are already bypassed the value of the seven months of the year 2019 that was the highest export ever reached from Italy to the States. So, at the end of July, we already are, in terms of value, higher than the seven months of the year 2019. And the restaurants have played an important role because markets, supermarkets and distributions is okay. But the real Italian food, the quality Italian food is going through the restaurants because the Italian restaurant is now consuming quality products, is aiming at the consumption of very good quality products because the Italian chef or the Italian chef in the Italian restaurants in the United States is always keeping a very strong point on the quality of the ingredients, technique of cooking, of course, and presentation. So rise, rise and rise. I don't say that there is a fall. I will put a cross on fall because the fall was the, of the Roman empire. We are still building up the empire of the Italian restaurants in the world. There you go. <laughs> I, I will right. stop here, then it's okay. Oh, that's good. Thank that's good. Very, very well said. Thank you very much, Nino, for your <laughs> comments. And, uh, you know, after your uh, speech, I feel much better for the future of our restaurant. Anyway, now let me introduce our moderator, John Mariani. He's a writer, journalist, and author. James Bird Foundation Award, the nominee for Distinguished Writing Award. And he's a restaurateur, reviewer, and a critic. And he's an author of many books, which include one of my book, favorite book, How Italian Cuisine Conquered the World. I also wanted to introduce our panelists. First, the chef uh, uh, Stefano Massanti is in California. He's a one-star Michelin uh, chef, with Il Cantinone, which is located in the smallest ski village on um, Madesimo, on, on the Italian Alps. Stefano and his wife, Raffaella, spent the day of season in Satai Winery in California when he is today. And he also oversees his in-house Salumeria. Uh, let me introduce the chef Mark Murphy, born in Italy. Mark has a strong French culinary background and the perspective. He is a very famous American restaurateur and well-known TV chef personality. And the last but not least, coming from all the way from Mexico City, we have a Chef Roberto Santibanez. Roberto is a native of Mexico City and a graduate with honors from a Paris a top culinary institution. And award-winning Chef Roberto Santibanez is a restaurateur, culinary consultant, author, and teacher in Mexico, Europe, and the United States. Welcome each and every one of you. And uh, John, I'll leave it to you the microphone. Thank you. Thank you, Gianfranco. Um, to address the direct question, is Italian food and Italian restaurants losing out number three? I'm shocked to hear. 
um, to Mexican restaurants and to Asian restaurants. According to the National Restaurant Association, one has to put into perspective that the National Restaurant Association deals overwhelmingly, far more than just a majority, with franchises, with fast food restaurants. So if you were talking about Taco Bell, if you were talking about P.F. Chang's, if you were talking about um, uh, any number of macaroni grills uh, versus them, well, that there may be an imbalance there because there are more of this or more of that. Also, if you, if you just say Asian restaurants, it doesn't mean anything because Asia is 30 different countries because it's not just a question of Chinese restaurants <laughs> pushing out the Italians. How many people can name a Chinese restaurant, except the little one around the corner where you get the mushu pork and the gentle sauce chicken, that little place. Everybody knows P.F. Chang's. Ask the average American to even name a Japanese restaurant unless they like to go to sushi once every six weeks. Ask anybody to name a Cambodian restaurant, a Thai restaurant, none of these have chains, okay? So consequently, if you lump 30 different nations together, Cambodia and, and, and uh, Formosa and Thailand and so forth um, together, of course, you're going to have a mass which might suggest to the National Restaurant Association that Italian food is now third. But when you get down to the way most people like to eat when they go out, and I use those words advisedly, Anybody can call up the Chinese restaurant down the, down the corner. Anybody can pick up stuff at P.F. Chang's. Anybody can go to Taco Bell's and take out stuff for, for their family. When people say, I want to go out to dinner, and they ask me, I've been doing this for 45 years. They ask me, I'm coming to New York. I'm going to Chicago. I'm going to be in Tucson, Arizona. Where should I eat? What kind of place would you like to eat? We love Italian. It's invariably that. More important, if you took Nine, I would, I'll make up a figure, 75 to 80% of the restaurants in this country that are not Italian have these, I made a little list here, are using Italian ingredients like extra virgin olive oil, which was unknown 30, 40 years ago, burrata, it's on every steakhouse menu, white truffles in season, they're doing that at places like Le Bernardin and then French, French restaurants. Um, tiramisu is always gonna be one of the desserts. Um, pesto, they're going to put on, on a fish. And uh, of course, then the two big ones, pizza and pasta. There is hardly a restaurant I have been to over the last two years, three years, four years, that does not have almost all of those as part of their menu, whether it is a steakhouse, whether it's a seafood house, whether it's an American restaurant or whatever, however they describe them, as not an Italian restaurant, we have won my, you know, when I wrote this book 10 years ago, How Italian Who Conquered the World, um, I was not exaggerating. And I think it's even more salient today because um, on any given week in the New York Times, New York Magazine, Texas Monthly, Chicago Magazine, the new openings will include one Laotian restaurant, one new sushi bar, one new place that's doing the food from a certain part of, of Texas, and three to four Italian restaurants. Now, they may be trattorias, they may be upscale Italian restaurants, but I can guarantee you they're going to be more on a weekly basis uh, than there are sometimes all those other restaurants combined. Largely, also, those other restaurants are storefronts, um, <clears throat> takeout places, sandwich shops, lunch shops, only open for breakfast. Um, so you cannot compare them to a full-scale Italian restaurant. Now, <clears throat> uh, John Franco said I could have eight minutes, so I wanted to go, John, it's seven minutes and 50 seconds, okay? Because we have such terrific guests here, they all have so much to say. Um, the awards given out, whether it's the stars and the newspapers, which they're not giving these days because of COVID, uh, or the Michelin Guide or the absolutely absurd um, 50 best restaurants of the year. Um, I, oh, they put a little sign up here. I have to. <laughs> um, uh, the 50 best restaurants of the year. Uh, these are, the Michelin Guide especially, 
only the top stars are given, not to only to French restaurants anymore. These days they're given <laughs> radically to Japanese restaurants and especially in Japan. Those are who are getting two and three stars, 30 of them, 40 of them, any single country. The others are the most extravagant tasting menu style of restaurants like a Noma, uh, like um, uh, 11 Madison Park and others, <clears throat> which can cost 350, $400, $500 before you even order a glass of, of wine. Those are invariably the only ones who get three and three stars, or in the case of the New York Times, four stars. Right? In Italy, well, we all know what we think of the Michelin Guide in Italy. It's, it's not even a guide to Italian restaurants. The, the places that they love tend to be either very extravagant, very experimental, like Massimo Bottura's wonderful cuisine. And he's become very, very famous, and he's become a spectacle, just as Jose Andreas was, just as Ferran Adria was. They parlayed their extravagance into worldwide recognition. And they sell cookware and they sell cognac and they open a place here and in Dubai and in Bangkok <clears> and whatever there. So, okay, you have to remove that from the quotient because not that many people go to all of those restaurants combined in any given night that a restaurant is open. They're not doing 150 covers. They're not even doing 75 covers. They're doing 40, 50, okay? You almost have to take them out of the equation. Uh, the, the, but those are the ones who of course get reported on. So when it comes to Italian restaurants, I don't think that Michelin knows it's uh, Asti from its Elba when it comes to uh, Italian food because they really can't get their heads around a place that only serves six dishes. One of which is now the dish of the century so far, cacio e pepe. Think of the simplest dish it is possible to make and one of the most difficult to make now Cacio e Pepe is not only on every single Italian restaurant in America, it is on every kind of restaurant I go to these days, especially steakhouses. It is remarkable how Italian food has been adopted across the board. There's also Italians shoot themselves in the foot too often by talking about authenticity. And uh, uh, Signore Lasbina mentioned that, that we're always on an evolution. Remember that 150 years ago, no one north of Rome ever even laid their eyes on a tomato or a pizza. Okay, these are things that are part of American revolution as much as anything else, because Americans, first of all, the tomato came from America, the potato came from America, all that polenta made with cornmeal came from America. Um, many, many things, strawberries, rather, so many things came from the Americas that changed Italian food at a time you didn't even have a unified Italy. And there's Bolognese food, and there's Roman food, and there's Abruzzese food, and there's Sicilian food, and they're not all alike. So to speak about um, uh, authenticity can often get in the way of a more intelligent discussion of how well these dishes are made and with the great ingredients, and sometimes can be changed here and changed there. The food I have at Il Gatto Parto, Vito Niazzo is a wonderful chef there, is not the same food that I have at Gianfranco's other restaurant, uh, which is the Leopard at Des Artistes, where uh, Jordan Frosolona is doing more Northern, okay? So whether you want to talk about authenticity, I remember years and years ago, the uh, wonderful Tony May, whom we all know and love, he was hired by the um, CIA Culinary Institute of America, to do their cook, cookbook for the Catalina de' Medici room. And he asked me to edit it. And uh, the first page I opened was uh, how to cook a donkey. And I said, we're not, we're not gonna be doing that up at the, the CIA. So take, take that one out. Especially since the instructions were, obtain your donkey, skin in the usual way. You know. But he had cacio e pepe in there and he had um, uh, uh, carbonara in there, all of the classic dishes and I edited it. So years later, as it is wont to do in many restaurateurs, you, know, you say, what, 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 what do you like of that new restaurant that opened a uh, little port portico or something? Oh, that's not real Italian. He's screaming, well, why is it not real Italian? They, use, they, they didn't use guanciale in the, in the carbonara. And I said, well, they use pancetta, right? That's that, wrong, absolutely wrong. Well, I said, Tony, on page 237, your recipe says, cut the pancetta and put it to the carbonara. 
<laughs> so, you know, you can't be so strict. And I want things to be made exactly the way they should be made. And the simpler, the better is the more difficult. Guys like Mark and, and, and others can tell you how difficult it is to make a, a martini, which is two ingredients. Right? So I am in no fear that Italian food is going down in popularity. It is only going up in popularity, largely because of the amount of ingredients of such high quality, uh, which has already been mentioned, um, that is now available. I am not a big fan of Italy, because Italy claims that everything they sell is the best and they have the best 365 days a year, which you can't have if you're getting it from a little Italian lady in uh, Sorrento who only makes uh, <laughs> you know, only makes six gallons of olive oil a, a year and you sell it. So, um, but the fact is that uh, Italy is uh, a good standard by which to judge how good and varied that Italian food has been. So let me now turn to, well, let's, let's turn to Chef Mark Murphy, who uh, despite his Irish name is um, very much an Italian guy. Hi everybody, buongiorno a tutti. Grazie tanto per uh, invitarmi qua. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Anyway, I, I wanted to just sort of reflect on on this whole notion that Italian food is going up or down or whatever. Uh, you know, for me, the trends that I see. Um, well, first of all, Italy is is. And we're talking about all these other countries that are very very large. Italy is is. What I love about Italy is they have DOCs for their Parmesan. They have you know they they have a huge amount of responsibilities and quality. They can't just produce and produce and produce because there's, there's 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 rules and regulations to keep quality. And to me, when I think Italian food, the first word that comes to my mind is quality. I think that is to me the most important thing. And um, I, I, so I really don't care about up or down. I want to eat good food. <laughs> like people are always asking me, like, "Oh, you make a carbonara? How do you make it?" I said, "Well, the first thing you need to do is get the right ingredients. You need good parmigiano or whatever. You can't get the stuff in the green jar that's half." you know, breadcrumbs and, and sawdust that taste like. So you got to have good ingredients. I think that's the, that is, that to me is something that's extremely important. I think that the other thing that I think we want to sort of think about too, when you think about Italian food and these, and these, um, these surveys or whatever, uh, I, you know, gluten is something that in the past, I don't know, whatever it is, five or 10 years, people are all getting crazy about gluten and gluten intolerant and they don't want to eat pasta. They're going to get fat which I think is completely absurd, but I do think that might, that might be making some people think that Italian food might not be as popular because they're like, oh, you know, I'm going on a date and my girlfriend doesn't eat pasta, so we can't go to an Italian restaurant, which I think what we have to do as chefs and as people in the food industry is to really make people understand that Italian food is not just pasta and pizza. There's, <laughs> there's, a, there's a huge repertoire in Italian food that is extremely important to sort of uh, to talk about and to and, and to nurture, I think, in that sense, and and getting getting uh, you know on another note is also getting maybe I guess more representation and just more fanfare around the idea that Italian foods quality is is superior to a lot of other things and that the everything <clears throat> is is so good and and having you know ambassadors out there representing uh, food um, the you know the the great Italian products and and I think if you're talking about just in America is um, getting people to talk about it, not even advertise, but even just, you know, get, get them more in the light of even places like the Food Network, where I work a lot of the times. And I think that it's important to know that, you know, that people are listening and people do pay attention to these things. So I, I you know, my opinion is Italian food's not going anywhere. At least it's not going anywhere in my kitchen. It's staying right where it's supposed to be in my plate. <laughs> Stefano, do you want to join the uh, fray? Yes, of course. So first of all, thank you again for having me here. Uh, yes, I'm taught, I'm 100% Italian. I have a mission star restaurant in Italy and uh, in summertime I'm here in California. Uh, so I don't see any problem for the Italian cuisine, honestly. Uh, sorry that my computer started to make some wrong okay okay um, so so the Italian ingredients are more and more popular and uh, Italian ingredients are more and more quality ingredients uh, I can see that in Italy so first of all because the Italians are, are asking for that since I was born 
And I learned from my grandmother or my mother to, to choose the best. And this is the Italian way. Uh, the concern for me is for the Italian restaurant to uh, uh, talk in a different way, or um, let's say uh, communicate that there is no Italian way of cooking. There is a regional or sub-regional Italian way of cooking. If you think about Italy is smaller than California and we have thousands of different ingredients, thousands of different way of uh, in, ingredients and thousands of different recipes that are com totally different from a area to another area. I come from the Alps and Lake Como is only 45 minutes away from my place. We don't share the recipes, we don't share the ingredients because they are totally different. So the future of the Italian cuisine is more, in my opinion, to uh, develop this, uh, um, I say, uh, this um, uh, capacity to let people understand that we have not an Italian way of cooking, but we have, have a regional Ital Italian cooking, a way of cooking. And uh, as uh, someone said, the chefs are ambassadors. Uh, that, uh, so Mr. La Spina said that the chefs are ambassadors. So the chef uh, or the restaurant, the Italian restaurant has to educate the people about the ingredients, uh, the real Italian ingredients. And this is what for me is really important. I see uh, a lot of American Italian restaurants here in California and in the last three, four years, uh, I see also some real Italian restaurants where they have maybe- I'm doing my least, webinar, that's what I'm doing. A, a, a list of uh, Italian, uh, Italian uh, classic or new dishes, uh, but they also put in the menu where the, the, the food is from. So for example, if Polenta is from Northern part of Italy or uh, I don't know, the buffalo is from, uh, is from uh, Campania, they say that. So, and, and they have the Italian uh, map so they, people can understand where is the food is from. This is the real trick. Of course, Italian food is, is uh, we are talking about quality. Quality, unfortunately, on, uh, cost money, is expensive. So the Italian, the Italian restaurants, the good one, are more and more expensive because the food uh, uh, is expensive. And these days, uh, talking about also shipment, uh, I see great in increase of, of, of the, the cost of the real Italian uh, ingredients because the shipment is, is more and more expensive. So uh, it is a real treat, but uh, the quality is in doubt. Then for me, uh, we have good cooking or bad cooking. It doesn't matter if it's Italian, Chinese, or, or Mexican, or Japanese, or Thai. Or Thai. Well, I'm sure that. Important thing, and what I see now is that the Americans are changing. I came here the first time to work seven years ago, on a regular basis. And I see this very, uh, very, very fast way um, changing in terms of the people are more and more concerned about what they are eating in the way they eat, uh, if the food is sustainable, if it's healthy and so on. And uh, it, Italian will be always between the first one for, for, for this. Our quality is not in doubt as the, the Mexican uh, good, uh, good food or the, the Chinese good food. Thank you. Roberto, can you lend a south of the border uh, perspective? <laughs> I, I, I do. I, I um, interested to hear so many things because I think we, we do share the same um, history of popularity, right? Immigration, little by little, took over Italians, Italians, Italians here, and then, and then, boom, 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 boom. and it has happened the same with Mexican cooking, right? We we've, we've seen a rise, a rise, a rise, a rise, a rise, and we and we keep on the rise, and it is also you know, right now the word chipotle, the word guacamole, the 
word jalapeno, the word, you know, they're ubiquitous. They're, they're actually in the dictionaries nowadays, right? You can search for guacamole and everybody knows what it is. Um, so I think we do share exactly that. And, and it, we are definitely on the rise too. And I would like to think that we are very, very much on the rise. But I also don't think uh, we are above the Italian cooking. You know, I also don't think, um, I do think we are extremely popular and we may be very close to, to be the second choice, but I, I, I still think Italian food is the first choice um, of American people. Um, I would say that we have something um, on our side, which is, you know, Americans love spicy food. It's in, it's in their genes. It's, 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 it's in their genes. Then the popularity of Mexican food, I think, has a lot to do with that spike, with that great uh, burst of flavors. But I also think that that, that also doesn't apply to 90% of Americans, right? It's, it's, it's more the, the urban, the two coasts, the, 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 the people. More, more understanding and more travel than more everything. Though it, it, uh, Italian cooking, it's all over the place. I mean, grandma in Nebraska probably will prefer to eat Italian cooking than any other cuisine, right? I, I, I totally think that we, we still have ways to go. If we think we are the most popular, I think we're still not. Gianfranco, you own a couple of restaurants and have another one in the works. Uh, you want to uh, speak on uh, the, the fine dining aspect of all this? Yes, uh, there are a few things. I mean, I, I'm very happy with the, what all the panelists that they said. You know, I feel much, much better for our future here in the United States. Thank you to everybody. Uh, but you know, and I am the only, let's say, the Italian with the Stefano, so I should be more promoting the Italian cuisine, etc. But with the Gruppo Italiano, as you know, we do a cooking class. Better we try to promote the culinary culture, Italian culinary culture in the United States. And we do culinary culture classes to uh, the CIA, to New York University, to the uh, St. John's University, the ICE. And when we do these classes, you know, and we have the kids around, we talk with them, we see that there is an emphasis when I ask them what you want to do, what you like your cuisine, what you want to do, they say fusion. Most of them, let's say on 20 people, 18, they say fusion. And as John say, is very big word, you know, what you include in that. But that's what me, Gianfranco Sorrentino, has the feeling that the young generation is uh, towards something for less known, more interesting. I don't know how to uh, phrase it anyway. Um, so as a Gruppo Italiano, what we do when we do these classes, we try to motivate these kids to choose and love and have the same passion for Italian food because nowadays we cannot have any people from Italy. It's very difficult to bring a skilled people from Italy. So we have to rely on this uh, uh, culinary institute for the future of, of our uh, our industry and uh, the kids they know little bit about everything the culinary institute are great but practically they don't know anything about a specific cuisine when we hire for stage or we are kids from the schools Vito the first thing they tell them say now forget everything they teach you now we start again and start to how to peel an eggplant and things like that so yes, the nowadays the food, uh, the, the, the Italian uh, cuisine is very popular, very good. But looking ahead, it's going to be like that for the, in the next ten years. Uh, I have my my doubts, especially though being on the ground, being tasting the culinary institute and what they they doing. Um, Business wise, my restaurant, thank God I knock wood, they're doing very well, uh, absolutely. Uh, thank God I have a mark that comes once a week to the restaurant so I can rely on his income. <laughs> and uh, we're doing pretty good. Uh, my question is what is going to be in, uh, in uh, 10 years? You know, are we going to substitute our 
um, employees, our uh, back of the house employees with American uh, skilled employees, and we going to have the same results? I don't know about it. Well, remember, Gianfranco, that uh, if you go back 50, 60 years, <clears throat> all of the cooks in French restaurants were Italian, and then all of the cooks became Mexican, and now many of the cooks are becoming Asian. Um, so that's part of evolution, too. Um, and what I wanted to throw out to the group is that in my, um, how Italians will conquer the world. I uh, said so basically three things after World War II changed Italian food radically. <clears throat> One was in the 1970s, uh, the uh, increase of real Italian ingredients that we already spoke of. The second was the Mediterranean diet, which was kind of a put up job by the olive oil commissions of the world, but it worked to convince you that Look at the Italians, look at the Greeks, look at the Spanish. They're not fat, they're not, you know, because we are eating at Macaroni Grill and, uh, and they were eating real Italian food, which was much healthier. So that, that was an enormous boon to uh, Italian food. Um, uh, but the third thing, and I want to talk to you all about this, is fashion. After 1980, Italian fashion took wing on the backs of models going down the runway, wearing Armani, wearing Versace, wearing Dolce Gabbana, et cetera, et cetera. The cars, the Italian cars, the Ferraris, all of that, Italian movie stars, Monica Bellucci and, and so many. They, this, this became very important in the 1980s to the La, whole La Dolce Vita idea which started in the 1950s at a time when Italy was just emerging. But Americans all know the, the, the sight of Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck going down the Via Veneto in that movie. Italians, uh, everybody knows uh, Catherine Hepburn with Rosano Brazzi, who apparently swept every woman off his feet. And they always had a scene of dining at a trattoria. Well, an interesting thing happened. When Bice, which is a Tuscan restaurant, uh, which is uh, in, in, in Milan, not a Tuscan city, um, opened in New York on 54th Street. The second day or so, Bill Blass ate there. And he had uh, spaghetti with some vegetables uh, sort of thing. And he looked around and he said, my God, this is a very fashionable place. It's right off Fifth Avenue. Um, and he said, my God, you know, this is the type of places that fashionistas and, and, and want to eat. And this is the kind of Italian food we want to eat. That was a signal moment that changed everything, not just because of what he said, but what, what Women's Wear Daily was reporting, what Vogue magazine, what are the most, you know, look at Da Silvano. That's where Madonna ate. That's where Anna Wintour took people, okay? When Carrie in Sex in the City had her birthday party, which nobody came to in Sex in the City at Il Cantonori, the phone rang off the hook of people who wanted to book Il Cantonori, a table for months and months and months in advance, just because Carrie ate there. That's the way fashion works. That's why when you have these lists come out, um, everybody puts on speed dial. I have to get into that restaurant. You have to get me into this restaurant. I was watching Billions, about billionaires, a TV show. And one of his binges says, can you get me into, in, can you get me into Nomad? And he said, oh, sure, I'll give Will Gadara a call. Well, people know who Will Gadara is? who's the owner of, of Nomad. Um, fashion is very, very important. And perhaps, uh, Signore Laspina, you can talk about that because you oversee uh, Italian fashion and textiles and, and uh, ceramics and wine, etc. cetera. Um, where is the, Itali the image of Italian style in terms of food and all those other things I just mentioned? I think it's muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So thank you for this question because it allows me to, to elaborate a little bit about these questions. Contrary to the other emerging cuisines like China and Mexican, and with the exception of the French, that there was a time that they were moving in parallel the fashion with a French uh, lifestyle, okay? I think that what makes uh, the Italian cuisine very strong is uh, the fact that is just an expression of what is the 
Italian culture, Italian lifestyle at this moment. So this means that fashion and cuisine, they are interacting. Fashion and design and cuisine, they are interacting. We see the, the world of the cinema, for instance, that has declared, you know, the love and the passion with whatsoever actor or actress, they are not supposed to be only the Italians. If they are not Italians, but we see continuously people that they are declaring the act of uh, love for the Italian cuisine. But at the same time, we see that they declare love for the Italian fashion, for the Italian design. So the, the, the cuisine, the food is part of this, uh, let's say, kind of leadership that Italian products have assumed worldwide. Because I think it's one of the contribution that uh, is important for the Italian fashion and cuisine is the fact that a lot of Americans now, even they don't travel to Italy, they see a lot of Italy in many other nations. Gianfranco was mentioning the fact that mozzarella now is very, very popular in France, for instance, but it's also very popular in many other cities. It's popular in Japan, in many metropolis. So this uh, colonization of the Italian culture, because fashion is culture, food is culture, design is culture, architects are culture, is an expression of culture. This colonization has made possible the, for each one of the sector to strength, you know, to strengthen each other. And that's why I think that uh, contrary to other nations that can count only on the dim sum or the uh, Beijing duck or other kind of products, the only exception is done by Italy and France. The cuisine, the food is not only working on its own, is part of a lifestyle. And that's, for, that's why I'm very confident about the rise and rise of the Italian cuisine. Why? Because at the moment in the United States, we see that they are not uniform uh, in terms of presence. We see that we have some peaks, for instance, in terms of consumption of fashion, but we don't have all the lovers of the Italian fashion equally in love with the Italian food. And we don't see the people in love of the Italian design equally in love for the Italian food or Italian fashion. So as a trade agency, as a trade commissioner, myself and my staff and my colleagues, what we are trying to do is to have a cross fertilization of the sectors. The problem is not only to conquer new section of the American societies, new geographical areas, but it's a very big task to make the consumption of the Italian goods, uh, if you want, in a uniform way. So to make sure that all the people that are consuming Italian fashion, the ladies that are in love with Italian fashion, they are also in love with Italian food. And at the same time, to make sure that the people that are in love with Italian food, they could become also in love. They can be in love with Italian design, Italian furniture, Italian uh, tourist place to be visited. And this is, comes also the tourist role. The tourist is very important for Italian cuisine because if it's true that this, we have national cuisine and regional cuisine, the way we can promote the regional cuisine is just one, to make sure that the tourists can visit the places. A strong point that Italy has compared to the other competitors is the fact that it's a unique, but at the same time is a multiple Italy. So the people can enjoy Pompeii, they can enjoy Rome, they can enjoy Florence. Every single small city is a famous brand. Do you know it's, where I would open a rep? Do you know where I would open a restaurant right now and the chefs, you should take, take my word for this. Matera in Puglia. Matera, exactly. New, new James Bond movie was uh, I was saying, I was going and, to say that. You know, I, was, I was in Matera two years ago and I slept in the same hotel where uh, the, the main uh, crew of the movie that was about Jesus Christ oh, yeah. were staying there. So this is the kind of uh, Matera, you know, I can offer. And in fact, a lot of foreign chefs have been settling down in Matera, mm -hmm. in some grottos, in some, uh, you know, spaces, opening up restaurants. Of course, there is no big name, but Matera can count on the fact that the area surrounding Matera, 
is agricultural land. So they can get any fresh ingredients they want. They can get all the mozzarella they want. They can get all the cheeses they want. So this is, I think, the, what characterizes Italy. The fact that it's a lifestyle that is becoming popular and popular. It's not only cuisine. I think sincerely that if you count only in the cuisine, you cannot have the leadership. You can become a leader like Italy only because you are playing a leadership in many different sectors. And interacting these sectors, they can, they can make Italy stronger and stronger. That's why I don't see the fall. I see on the contrary a continuous rise because we have to conquer new generation. Generation Z, for instance, doesn't know anything about uh, good food, but they are much more interested than the millennials about good food. They don't know yet what is good food. They only are aiming at something that is sustainable. They are aiming at something that it can be healthy, but this is what you have to do. So the new challenge for the Italian cuisine is to conquer this new generation of guys the guys that today, they are 22, 23, 24, but in 10 years time in this society, they are going to be leaders. They're going to be the people that are replacing the present leaders because they are going to take the power, I think, at a very young age for a change of generation. And they have to be educated by Gianfranco, the group of Gianfranco, the chef, by anyone that wants to make sure that after the baby boomers that have, have been the, the real success for the Italian cuisine and the Italian fashion. Then we conquered the millennials. Now we have to be sure that the Italian cuisine, the Italian fashion, the Italian design, architecture, art, culture, everything is going to play an important role in the lifestyle of the Generation Z. We are doing some of the sections in that direction. But once again, it's by working all together that we can make it fashion stronger, food stronger, and every sector. Because what is going to be stronger is the Italian lifestyle, not only the Italian cuisine. Gianfranco, did I see that somebody's tr trying to call us who said she's from Puglia? Is there a notification there? No? No? Okay. I thought there was somebody who said, I am from Puglia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Franco, if I, if I have, if you give me a minute, I just would like to say something because I think I'm not going to be able to do that. I, I, when you say, we spoke about young people wanting uh, to like fusion. Um, I think we, you, me, um, are, are very um, attached to our traditions and to, you know, our past and everything. But we, I think we need to understand that we are both countries, Italy and Mexico, our cuisines today are fusion. It's, it's, we are the, our, our cuisines are the product of certain fusions, right? There is Italian cooking 600 years ago and there is Italian cooking after they got the tomatoes, right? The, it, 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 we've always historically accepted some kind of fusion. We just need to be careful with what we do with that fusion, right? As groups of people, as Italians and as Mexicans. Okay, a fusion starting is coming. Oh my God, these young people are gonna ruin. We all need to, be careful with what we make as fusion, but we are the product of fusion. Mm -hmm. um, I heard a, a couple of anthropologists in a panel uh, the other day, and it's amazing. I'm almost my mother, um, she's an anthropologist, and uh, they said something very important. And they said, there is no tradition without innovation. Innovation and tradition go, go hand by hand. Mm -hmm. Tradition is something we decide as a group of people that we want to be the tradition, but we change it. We evolve it as societies. We are, our cultures are made by us saying, oh, now this is traditional, right? There's, there's a group of indigenous people in the mountains that had this traditional dance with this traditional dress, right? All of a the sudden they decide this year it's boring. So they added a bow, right? To the hair of the ladies that were dancing. Well, in a few years, that bow became traditional. Right, in a decade, now everybody knows that bow as traditional for that dance, right? So we as society create our own evolution and our own traditions. And I think it's very important to know that too, not, not to be afraid of it. Stefano? 
Yeah, I totally agree with Roberto. <clears throat> and we have consi to consider also that younger generation are traveling much more than us, uh, especially I see Italian. Information. Informations, they, they have Instagram, they see dishes, plates, ingredients, uh, experiences, uh, just in time. So, and they want to experiment. I see my, my, even my guys, Italian guys in Italy, my, my sous chef and my line, line cooks, they like to experiment with our traditional ingredients with a touch of Mexican uh, or a Mexican, uh, for example, a Mexican uh, uh, technique. We're losing you. And uh, that, that's, I think, is really interesting. And, and uh, as Roberto said, uh, the, mm, the, the Michelin star chefs like Roberto Bottura, uh, you, you mentioned, John, and, or Noma, they are experimenting and doing a lot of extrava extravagance uh, cooking. I totally agree with you. But sometimes they create something that, that uh, most of the people like. And, and it became, become tradition. In, uh, imagine that Carbonara was born in the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a practically brand new dish. It's not a really traditional. It was invented, probably, they, I, I read an interesting article about Carbonara that probably was an evolution of an, on an American uh, breakfast. Exactly. If you think about that, a scrambled egg with some with some pecorino. You know, they they say I see it a bit of a spin. No, no. <laughs> but, but let's, let's go back. Okay, let's go back to Mr. Spina. But why why is so popular? Why why people like very much that? Because the mix of the ingredients works. Can be different. Can be a different. A Nino, different you are on mute. Yeah, can be a different. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you because this is a, something that really has been a, some some a big uh, element of discussions. You know, because yeah. you cannot say that the carbonara was invented by an American soldier no, that no, was no, not. No, 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 no. Sorry, not, sorry. Yeah. But I'm what not... you say makes easier to say what I'm telling. So if it's only 50 years old, then makes it that uh, somebody can say, you know. It's just new. It's so new that since it's 50 years ago, even something more, 60 years ago, that an American soldier was walking in the countryside of Lazio and then he decided that he had some eggs and some, uh, uh, you know, homemade pasta and he made a carbonara. That's not true. So we I'm have to be careful. We have to be careful for carbonara. It's a totally different story. It's not what somebody has been telling to the Americans that this was invented 50 years ago. Because in the countryside of Lazio, there was already, first of all, is the pecorino is not Grana Padano. So it's pecorino. Oh. That's it. Oh. So then it's okay. <laughs> Whatever is bacon or you can call it the way. is pancetta, is, is uh, uh, anything that is local. But the name of Carbonara, there is a, a reason why. So because the people that were making, making charcoal and they were mixing, you know, the black peppercorn and something that was coming from their mantles when they were doing this. Otherwise, there is no reason to call it carbonara. They could have called, you know, pasta with eggs that. and bacon. So it's, let's not make everything simple. No, when no, no. we talk my about tradition. My approach is different. My approach is that sometimes, sometimes you have influences as, as Roberto said, uh, I mean, the Italian way of cooking evolved in the centuries. As again, we didn't have the, the tomato. We didn't have a lot of a lot of different ingredients came from other countries, uh, like peaches, for example. They come from Persia, so they come. Yeah, yeah, of course. Two thousand five hundred years ago, <laughs> of course. <laughs> even of the course. cherries, even of the course. cherries, they were brought to back to Luculo, but it's okay. But the problem is that there's no more these me, cherries now let, are Italians, they're not Asians. If you let me talk, please. Yes, please. So what I want to say is that sometimes uh, a chef or, or a cook uh, try to mix ingredients and these ingredients work and, and this is something new that, that in, becomes tradition if people like it. 
I tell, you one, I tell you one story. When I was many, many years ago in uh, Korea, the people didn't dare to call it Italian restaurant and they call it Mediterranean restaurant was at the, at the Lotte Hotel. That that time was the number one uh, rest, uh, hotel in uh, Seoul. The reason why they call Mediterranean is because they could say every time there was somebody that was protesting, that is our way. So they were never able to make an original dish. So they were hiding, you know, with a veil that was called Mediterranean. The first great uh, restaurant that opened in Beijing in the year 2003 was a fusion restaurant very close to the Forbidden City. The fusion very often has been not a cultural choice, but has been a way of putting things together in order to gather different ethnic groups. And at the end, it was a way to protect the quality or the ba bad quality of the restaurant because every time that you could protest and say, you know, this spaghetti alla carbonara is horrible. They said, you know, this is our way. This is our interpretation. No, no, no. So we have, to be, we have to be careful because fusion and Very Mediterranean, careful. this has been always, uh, you know, a way to cheat the people. So if a fusion is a cultural fusion, I agree with you. If it's Mediterranean, I can agree with you. But I would like to say that very often, calling an a restaurant fusion restaurant is because you don't, have to, you don't have to count on original products, authentic products, and you don't need a real good chef because whatever is coming from the kitchen is your way. So nobody can protest because it's a fusion. Again, I want to be clear. I, say, I have said at the beginning, there is good food and, and, and not good food. But this is my, my opinion, first of all. Then the line between fusion and confusion is very, very thin. You agree with that probably. So again, uh, what I want to say is that tradition is something that was invented by someone and most of the people of the area start to like it. And, he, and Robert, as Roberto said, became a tradition. So I don't wanna be, I'm, I'm, I work in Italy and I, I and, and work here. I see more uh, uh, influences from other countries right now in Italy. And, and I don't see the, the, this as a, a treat because if if uh, can be also a Trojan, a Trojan horse uh, for the Italian ingredients because our excellence can be paired with other other ingredients. And I, I don't see uh, something wrong in, in that. Uh, we are more and more uh, mixed in our in, in our culture. So to keep tradition is very important. But to experiment is also very important. I don't, and in 10 years, probably Gianfranco, we will have more and more, uh, uh, let's say international or, uh, or little and in a right way, uh, fusion uh, dishes based on Italian, on Italian good ingredients. I mean, uh, someone as, as Mr. Laspina said, is using balsamico everywhere. Uh, on, on things that for an Italian uh, way of thinking is too much. Yes. But sometimes, sometimes balsamico works on, also on, on other cultures and why not? Stefano, think of, of a dish like carpaccio. This distinctly came from Harry's bar. There's a story behind it. And all of it is just raw meat with a drizzle of, uh, of like mayonnaise in it. Well, again, going back to fashion style, it took off. Well, I don't know anybody older than myself. I know very few people older than myself, but I know the generation behind me. Italians never ate crudi. Very few people ever heard of crudi. And I, I know, ugh, ugh, we don't eat raw fish. Now oh, yeah. crudi is on every Italian menu. Yeah, so, uh, only the butchers, the butchers used to, to, to eat. Uh, yeah. uh, that's a perfect example of something coming new with some innovation yeah, and, and different exactly. cultures crossing with the Japanese exactly. thinking they're eating raw fish and the crudo. I mean, I, I think David Pasternak is probably the one who uh, 
who probably pioneered that the most, at least in at least in New York City. He was amazing with the with the crudo, and and now you see it in Italy more and more. And I, I, well, I think it was it's, picked it's up great the addition. Bernardin. The Bernardin was the first to serve it as they can they outright call it carpaccio of fish, which right. you could have called you could also call it sashimi because you wanted to, but they made a big hit with that, and they yeah. did put yeah. some balsamic vinegar on it. Yeah, but again, so. Uh, the Italian way of cooking is changing, and uh, it's changing in in a good way. And chefs are amb ambassadors of the Italian ingredients of the Italian ex excellence. And I don't see uh, our way of cooking in treat uh, will be different for sure. And uh, and probably in the future we will have. M little more specialized <clears throat> restaurant, maybe more traditional, maybe more uh, modern or experimenting, based on on the on on Italian ingredients. We, and we, you know, we just I I think it about Italians as the luckiest uh, people in the world. We were we had the the chance to be born in a special place that is in the middle of the Mediterranean Mediterranean Sea. And we have, I live on the Alps and in a small country as Italy, we have so many different uh, climate, uh, so many different um, ingredients and microclimates that everything that we brought, bring to Italy, like the peach, <laughs> we said, well, like the tomatoes, like, like other ingredients, they grow so well, so good. And then we have the heritage or centuries yeah. of way of cooking or, or respect of the of the food because it's central in our culture that uh, uh, makes us uh, very special as well as Italians in create and and uh, invent new combination that will be always successful. That's my opinion. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I think we have to wrap up, but we have two questions. One for Mark Murphy that he has to leave. And yeah, yeah. being American and really be on the ground here in the United States, we saw the race and the fall of a French restaurant. What do you think will be for the Italian restaurant in the next 10 or 20 years? And I then mean, I have I, a question for I, Roberto. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. I do have to run, but um, listen. I think I think to me, the, the Italian food and the Italian culture is so well ingrained into our country that it's gonna, it's always gonna be here. And I think it's up to the chefs and it's up to the the people. And and I think I think we're we're very lucky because of Instagram, because of travel, because of what people understand and know of Italy. It's not gonna be able. It's gonna stay. It's gonna stay consistent. It's gonna stay quality because people understand what it really is. It's not gonna get what we'd call bastardized. I mean, we obviously have all been to Italian restaurants that some of them, you know, some of them that aren't, aren't run by people that are very good at it and they've sort of bastardized the food to, to, for, to, uh, to you know, make it not so good. But I think that nowadays there's, there's, a, uh, there's a standard that has to be kept up because people are more educated because they see the food on, on social media, they see it on television, they see great travel shows. And, uh, you know, people still, people travel to Italy. You talk not to anybody in America if they have not left America. You know, where do they want to go first? They're not talking, they, they mostly want to go to Europe. They want to go to Italy. Everybody wants to go to Italy. And I think that, um, you know, I, I don't think we're in any danger of Italian food going down because it's just, uh, there's too much knowledge about it and everybody knows what good food is. And, and I think we're, we're lucky about that because, um, and I think all of us chefs should be, carrying the torch and, 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 you know, carrying on the tradition, even if there's some new ones that might be showing up, you know, things like that. But um, absolutely. It's been great to see you all, everybody. I'm sorry I have to run, but. Um, Thank uh, you very much, Mark. Thank you. Forza, Forza Italia. Andiamo. Forza. <laughs> Ciao a tutti, grazie. <laughs> Gianfranco. Gianfranco, I also uh, would like to run if I, if I could, if you ask me the question. Oh, I've uh, yes. one question about, about price. Uh, Prices are going up for reasons beyond all of our control. You have to expect that prices are going up. But these days, I am seeing a lot more $28, $34, $36 pastas. That's not what people are prepared for. And we all know that's not what the pasta costs, but maybe there's a chicken. Um, is that a problem, Gianfranco? 
Uh, well, it depends on the market, of course. I mean, uh, thank God, or um, unfortunately, I don't know what to say, we target that 1% that they want a quality and they pay for it. it as we said before, quality costs money. We have to educate the people that if you want quality, you have to pay more. You have to allocate more money for good food and less money probably for a jacket or an iPhone. Uh, is a problem. Uh, in certain French of market, yes, for the small restaurant that cannot charge $30, $34 will be very, very difficult. And, uh, you know, the, my, my, uh, I am scared that then they're going to start to save money on the, on the quality. But let's make it very clear quality cost, and we have to expect that quality food, we have to pay for it. My question for Roberto is from uh, somebody, Caroline Potter. Uh, can you talk about how there are more fine dining restaurants, Italian restaurants, compared to Mexican? There aren't enough Cosmo type spot, and is Mexican food getting lumped with the Tex Mex? Uh, no, first, I don't think it's getting lumped with Tex Mex. I think uh, Tex Mex is its own culture, and um, I don't see it as as bad or anything, I, well, it's just different. Um, I think the um, the perception of Mexican food nowadays is it's always been that it's very familiar, very shareable, very informal. Um, I don't think that um, you know we have come to that point where where our restaurants are going to be like you know hopefully very soon, but um, like. like um, like a super high-end Italian restaurant, like, like like we know them in New York, right? I I, I think that there's a, that is still a step that we need to take. Um, that's why I insisted too that that I think Italian cuisine is is still a step above us, um, and we need to keep fighting to to get there, um, and we need to be evolving our cuisine and being very careful too, because uh, like like like. Um, Stefano said too, is we need to be careful, but we, we will be careful in respecting our traditions and respecting our past um, and acquiring little by little things um, into our cuisine. I, I think we can make it happen. John, would you like to wrap up? We are well, a little late. I'd be, I'm, I'm not happy to because it has been so stimulating and I, I love the different points of view, but yes. I, I feel strikes We need another that. one. <laughs> it started out, yeah, but it started out, John Franco, with you saying that we're in trouble, according to certain sources, and I think we've come out of it all agreeing that uh, we are not at all in trouble, and as uh, Senora Lesvina says, uh, we just got to work more and harder to put everything together with Italian style, everything, as you said, you know, everybody wants to go to Italy, everybody loves Italian fashion, everybody loves Italian clothes, everybody now loves Matera because of James Bond, so we're, we're in very good shape for the future. Well, thank you very much to uh, our moderator, our panelists and our viewers, thank you, and uh, talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you, bye thank bye. you. Thank okay. you, bye-bye. Bye-bye.